Once again, happy Movember, friends, and now we're starting IB Physics, Topic 8, Energy, Power, and Climate Change, and we are going to focus on the energy part in this one, and we're going to discuss how thermal energy can be converted into work, we're going to talk about how some of that energy is lost in degraded energy, and while your cars can't be 100% efficient, we'll draw some what's called Sankey Diagrams to better describe where that energy is going to. And finally, we'll talk about how electricity is produced to make awesome things like the computer you're watching this video on happen. An ingenious way that man has found out to make stuff work for him is to light a fire. Let me assume that I've got a fire here. Uh, so let's say I'm going to light fire. It kind of looks like a hand, but take my word for it. It's fire. Underneath a cylinder, and I've got some gas in here. It's key to understand that once you heat a gas, it expands, and expanding gas does work because it causes something to move, and you can make that motion work for you. So let's say that we have an infinitely high cylinder, then as you expand the gas, every bit of that energy that goes into expansion can be converted to work if you have an infinitely long cylinder. But eventually it just keep going up and up and it wouldn't be very useful anymore. To get repetitive work, you eventually need something that is cyclical. So let's say that as this piston moves up and down, that's going to cause this wheel to spin. And so it expands and does work, but eventually it has to compress again to put the gas back in the original state. And when that happens, uh, you're not going to be able to use all of your energy. So this is uh, not a complete transfer of energy into work. Uh, because eventually you got to get that back site, gas back to the same state to continue making work. As you operate a heat engine, perhaps a steam engine, if you were born in the 1800s, uh, you're going to light a fire underneath some gas, maybe water vapor, and you're going to heat it up so that it expands. And as you do that, you are going to have energy or heat going in. And that's good, because that's going to cause this to expand, and that does work. But it needs to be cyclical. So eventually, you're going to have to recompress that gas. And as you do that, that's going to heat the gas up a little bit. But that heat, you can't just put back in. That heat is going to come out as heat loss. And that energy is not going to be useful. Maybe you can use it to like keep your hands warm, but you can't use it to do work for you. We say that it's degraded. And the definition for that, that you need to write down, is this here. Pause it. Write this down, know it, and love it. Sankey diagrams are not too difficult. They show you where the useful work is going in your, let's say, a steam engine or a heat engine, and where your degraded energy is going, and what the relative amounts are. So with the Sankey diagram, and it's got that weird spelling there, uh, where you start, this is your input energy. This might be from, let's say if we are doing an old school steam engine, where you boil water with fire or coal, uh, your input would be coming from the fire. And then going straight off to one side is going to be your useful energy, or what's used for work. That's pushing a piston up and down, maybe. What's branching off down here, that is not useful for work. That is your degraded energy. Maybe you can just heat your hands up with it and keep from freezing to death. And let's say this has a width of A. Maybe this has a width of B. And this has a width of C. The widths are representative of percentages of energy. So, I don't know, maybe this is... Uh, 20% of the energy is useful, and maybe 80% is not. So 
the width-wise, A is going to equal B plus C. If you are given a Sankey diagram to solve in an IB situation, you should be high-fiving all of your imaginary friends around you because they're really not too hard. It kind of goes back to just the thermal unit and efficiency, usually. Uh, take a look at this problem. Knowing what you know about energy and efficiency, pause it, see if you can solve it. Now, if we want the overall efficiency, then that is going to be our useful output uh, divided by the total input. And our useful output up here is the 20. The input is the 80. And so easy. 25%. Whoa, how hard was that? Not at all. And then this wants to know maximum theoretical efficiency. Ignoring friction. So that means this friction becomes useful. And electrical losses. I don't know if that's hardly unnecessary, but let's assume you don't have to do it. So now our efficiency, our output, has been 20 plus the 12 has been added to it, 4. And that's still divided by the total of 80. And that's going to be about 36% divided by our 80%. And that gives us 45%. It's just that easy. Many of the methods that we'll use in this topic or in this unit for producing energy uh, eventually converts that energy into electricity. So it's important you understand that method. Take a minute and pause it and see if you can work through this diagram and figure out what you, each part is doing. Much of it you'll be familiar with from other units. Now the key to any thermal power plant uh, is here. We've got a fuel source that is going to be usually on fire. And that could be uh, coal or oil or maybe it's uh, nuclear. And that's just going to give off some heat. And that's going to heat up something that's going to turn into steam, usually water. And it goes through this turbine, and then we get kinetic energy, because those turbines <laughs> uh, are spinning. And then that goes to a generator. And then you have coils and magnets that are made to spin. And that's going to use what you know about electromagnetism to turn this into electricity. It's a little cool lightning bolt. Now up here you're gonna have to cool that steam off and then it goes back into the system as a little bit cooler water than the boiling point and that water will hopefully cycle through be used to get in again. Now that electricity is gonna be at a certain voltage maybe 25,000 volts and then it's gonna be stepped up to a crazy high voltage because this reduces power loss. Then it goes across the giant robot-looking metal power poles through rice fields and corn fields. Uh, once it gets near your town, it gets stepped down. Because if you use 400,000 volts, everyone's going to die in your house. And it steps it down to 220 or 110, depending on what country you live in. 